All right, guys, what's going on, man? Justin here again. As always, thanks for watching my channel. Check it out. Looking at the Kawasaki 636-2017. Gonna see if your boy can't get approved. Trade in that 390 Duke and get something a little more giddy up and go. Thought about a leader, but this 636 has got my attention. Let me know what you think. All right, it's a waiting game. I'm here in San Bernardino at Chaparral Motorsports where they have almost every single kind of motorcycle you could ever be looking for or want to check out. So I can't wait to see what happens here. Looking to make that upgrade. Uh, right now, kind of staring at the Kawasaki 636. Also looking at the R6. It really comes down to financing and what it is that I get approved for. But I'm excited, man. I'm excited to get away from the 390 Duke. Uh, you guys know that I've had that bike now for a couple years. It's been real, it's been fun, it's been real fun, but I want something with a little bit more power. And frankly, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm ready to move forward. Early in the morning, man, on a Sunday, uh, about 7.30, 7.40 a.m., and it is a brisk 34 degrees outside. I'm in the truck, I've got my trailer. Those of you that have been following me on Instagram know that I was at Chaparral Motorsports down in San Bernardino looking at motorcycles yesterday. And you saw that I actually signed for one, so, I'm getting ready to head on down there now uh, to pick it up and trailer it back to the house. It's a completely different bike than the one that I have. I did not actually trade in the 390 Duke because I would have pretty much just lost my ass on it. So the game plan is basically this. They uh, had told me that I could get a two inch lowering spring and I could drop the suspension down uh, low enough for the wife to be able to make it her first bike. So that's kind of like my game plan right now. I'm heading on down to go pick it up. When I get down there, we'll uh, do a walk around of the bike, introduce you to my salesman, who also has a YouTube channel, by the way. And I'll put a link down in the description for you guys to go check him out. Make sure you hit a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to him. Let him know that your boy sent you. He's a fairly new channel. He's just starting up, and he's planning on doing more motorcycle reviews on his channel of the different types of motorcycles that are currently available that you can find at Chaparral Motorsports. That being said, I'm hitting the road. We'll see you guys here in a little bit. All right, guys, we're here at Chaparral Motorsports in San Bernardino. We're gonna go inside, see if they have the bike prepped, pull it on out, have Josh kind of run through it a little bit, kind of show us some of the features on the 636. I know it's a little bit of an older bike, but from what I'm told, this thing's legit, it's badass. So we're gonna check it out, let's go. All right, guys, I'm here with Josh. We're down here at Chaparral. He's gonna show us around the bike and then show us some of the features that it has. Yeah, show me. Man. Check it out, new bike. Very excited, right? Yeah. Let's check it out. Look at that. Only 2,188 miles. Dang, nice. Yeah, let's start this bad boy up, huh? You yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, it. fire it up. Show me some of these features. Okay, so you got traction control and power mode. So traction control, you have three different options or you can even turn it off. Right now, as you can see, you also have a power mode, which is right now on low. So if you want to take it the most easiest, you would put it on low in one. The power, the traction control on this bike works as if, if you were to keep your front tire, if it comes off the ground, it reduces the power to the rear tire, which keeps it running down. You have three different modes. So you can actually change it out or completely turn it off, which is the tracking. Okay. Same thing, you have your low, and these connections right here, you can hit that, it turns it to fast, and then you can turn it to low, fast, same thing with the power, traction, so you see there, and number two, do it again, number three, do it again, completely off, hit this, go to fast, now you're completely track ready. Nice. You do have a suspension adjustment that you can choose, 
adjust your tension or your softener depending on the compression and rebound that you need for the trap. Right now it's set it up about, I would say about 170, 185 pound rider. Should be fine with that. Should be ready to go. Of course you have the turn signals for not self canceling. And then you have your ABS layer on. You indicate that you have ABS. And also if you look at the bike, the, the turn signals are integrated into the body which is nice so you don't have to worry about buying a fender eliminator kit nice and if you were to put sliders on where would you put them right here you might have to drill a little spot there you put them right in there also they make a rear slider set you can mount right here or the rear sets can go there as well this is your chain adjustment right here. Right now it's set up, but you always want to make sure that you keep your chain loop. That's a big thing, you guys. Keep your chain loop. What I do is every probably 500, 600 miles, I loop my chain adjusted. Make sure it's okay. Check the tire pressure because that's what's going to keep your tires lasting the longest as long as you keep the air pressure up. I always just go through, check my oil, check my chain, check my tire pressure just to make sure you're good. And then where's the fuel gauge? All right, so your fuel gauge, so wait, you have a light here that's an indicator. So when that light comes on, you got about 30 miles. You roughly will get on this bike about 100, about 150 miles per tank. Okay. You can get up to 180 depending on how you're riding. Typically, if you keep it under 8,000 RPMs, you're gonna get closer to 50 miles per gallon. If you go over, it's gonna drop significantly down to probably 30 miles per gallon. Sweet. All right, guys, like I said, Josh also has a YouTube channel. He's going to be doing more bike reviews on it uh, over time. Yeah, heck yeah, man. And then uh, I want you guys to go check him out. I'll put his channel link down in the description for you guys. Hit the subscribe button. Let him know that your boy sent you. And if you're in San Bernardino County, come on down to Chaparral and ask for Josh. Right on, man. All right, man, thanks for showing us the bike. Appreciate it. No problem. All right, we're going to get it loaded up, and then we're going to trailer it home. Well, <laughs> here she is. The ZX-6R Ninja. 636 finally got it home haven't ridden it yet this is gonna be a first ride that's kind of exciting well let's do this Definitely, definitely heavier than the KTM.
So what's your plan? You said you wanted to come back and clean the shit out. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, so. I didn't know if you wanted to go for a ride before I had to get busy cleaning. Yeah. I don't know. Where do you want where do you want to go? I don't know. <laughs> Shit's fucking fun, man. <laughs> Gets up to speed pretty quick. I dig that. Uh, I didn't know if you knew any little routes that you usually go on. Pioneer Town is the only way that I normally go. You want to go to Pie Town, turn around, come back just for the fuck of it?
the turns. I got a lot of practice to do. <laughs> Yeah. Woo. This thing is fucking sweet, man. I'm fucking digging it. Body position's gonna take some getting used to. Low speed tight turns gonna take some getting used to. But I'll tell you what, that'll fucking do. That will do. Let's get it back to the house. Alright guys, we're back here at the house, it's late at night, but man, let me tell you something, my new favorite bike, bar none. Alright guys, so overall had a great experience at Chaparral Motorsports, Josh, again thank you very much. Guys, if you haven't already gone over there, which I'm sure that you haven't because it is a brand new channel, I think I'm his second subscriber that he has, possibly his third, you need to go down to the description, click on his link, go on over. He's going to do more motorcycle reviews on all the different bikes they have over there at Chaparral. He's going to walk you through some of the features and benefits. He's already got a couple of videos posted up. He really did help me out a lot with this bike. Quick little background. So I did walk around Chaparral. I was eyeballing a few things. Y'all know that I was eyeballing that H2 for a little bit, but it was way, way, way out of my price range. Also, I think, yeah, it would have been kind of crazy to step up from a 390 Duke <clears throat> to an H2 without having something a little bit more on the mild side, if you will. That being said, I'm completely satisfied with the ZX6R. Phenomenal bike. The 636 has got so much power. It's got so much torque. There's different settings. I'm just barely tapping into it. Right now I'm starting off on the lowest settings and I can tell you it is quite an enjoyable bike and I'm just barely scratching the surface at this point. Josh really did help me out by explaining a lot of different features and benefits of the different bikes that are out there. Between the CBR1000, the CBR600, there was the uh, Yamaha R6 that I was looking at. Um, <clears throat> I was also looking at the 636. I looked at the ZX10R and I was even looking at the 650 and he had explained to me that he would be doing me a disservice if he sold me the 650 because it's not going to have what it is that I'm looking for out of a bike. So what was I looking for out of the bike that I'm not already getting with the 390 Duke? Well, I think the main and obvious thing is the power, right, and the torque. 
That's going to be number one. I found myself in the various situations when I'm trying, when I'm on the freeway or the highway, trying to get around these OHV tractor trailers and everything else. With oncoming traffic, there was just not enough get up and go with 390 Duke. This is a downsides, okay? I'm a list of downsides and then the good sides. One of the other things that I had a problem with with the 390 Duke, now I've put a little over 2,000 miles on this. Now, in under two years, that can either be looked at as not a lot of miles or quite a bit depending on your drivability. It has been some pretty long and cold winters here, but I've been everywhere with this bike. I've been over to Cafe 66, over there at Roy's Cafe. I went to Cafe 247. Uh, I've taken a trip to Palmdale where I was basically on the road for seven hours straight, both during the hot part of the day and the coldest part of night. Uh, I've been down to Palm Springs a handful of times, went down to Hotel California, saw Elvis's house, passed by the windmills. I've been out to Palm Desert. I mean, I pretty much took this bike around and did everything. We even went to the Integratron with it. So overall, it was an enjoyable ride and an adventurous bike. And you know what? It was actually quite perfect. I'm going to go into one good thing here. It was perfect when it came to passing my DMV driving test without having to go to a course. Now, I'm not against courses. I think they're great. I think you should all go to a course. In fact, I'm still planning on going to a course at some point to actually improve my skills as a rider. But if you want a bike that's really easy to pass the DMV riding test, I think you'd be better off with an upright bike than you would be to get a crotch rocket or to get like a Harley Davidson. I think you're going to have a little bit more difficulty maneuvering through the course at the DMV. The other downside that I had with the 390 Duke was the seat. The seat is very uncomfortable. It's very hard on your ass. And then not to mention because of the speeds that I have to travel at both in freeway and highway, makes it very uncomfortable in general because I'm already leaned over as it is tucking into 30 mile an hour winds. And I figure if I'm already going to be hunched over, well then I might as well get something that already has the setup for it. This was another problem that I had with an upright bike. I think in town it's perfect if I'm only planning on going 35 to maybe 55 miles an hour. But if you're going to have any kind of win at 55 to 75 miles an hour, you're not going to want a bike like this. I'm just going to put that out there, okay? It's a great bike for commuting in town, not so good on freeway and highway. That's my opinion about it. The other issue that I had uh, came down to not just warranty, but the dealership itself with KTM. This thing has an oil consumption issue that they either don't care to try to find out or they won't help me to find out. They put two miles on it and told me they couldn't find a problem. They even had the audacity to tell me that they removed the oil pan and they didn't see anything wrong with that. Now I'm in automotive tech and I've never removed an oil pan from any kind of car to look for an oil consumption issue. Okay, usually it's topped off with oil and driven so many miles. You got oil pressure testing, you got compression testing, you got leak down testing, you got a lot of different methods of testing including drive time to see how much it's consuming and then you go back to your service information and see if it's within the acceptable range. But they didn't do that with this. They schluffed me off. They told me they sold the franchise. They refused to help. So now I'm stuck with the possible oil consumption issue and in a thousand miles I'm going to have to put over a quart of oil in it. So that was my other thing. Another thing that I hated about the KTM 390 Duke. We all know about the chain adjustment and the slop that was in the chain, that that was an issue that within 800 miles or just under 800 miles I already had chain slop. You wouldn't expect that out of a bike. Now granted, we did hear Josh say you should lubricate and check your chain every 500 miles or so, which I think is actually good information to pass along to you guys because at just under 800 miles I did have an issue with the KTM. Now I didn't buy the 636 brand new, I did buy it as a used bike. This bike has just a hair over 2,000 miles on it. So about the same as my KTM 390 Duke. It's still in really great condition. It's got brand new tires practically. They're, they're still rubber and the little tiny furry things that stick up on the tire in the back. It's pretty much a brand new bike. I don't know that this person actually ever rode it. Maybe he just traded it in for something brand new. At least that's what I've heard. I've never had a problem with Kawasaki in the past when it came to my dirt bikes. And it seems like I have a lot of issues with the KTM 390 Duke. So the KTM platform wasn't even in the range, okay? I did hear a lot of good things about Yamaha with the R6 and the R1 platform and even the GSXR, okay? But again, a little bit out of my price range and it wasn't exactly the style of bike that I was looking for. Didn't care for the CBR1000, also got a lot of bad reviews on YouTube. So again, I came back to the 636. Everything kept pulling me back towards the 636. And I gotta be honest, everything about this bike I love so far. 
The seat's comfortable. I'm six feet tall and I have long arms. The riding position is extremely comfortable. If I want to be upright, I can be upright because my arms are just long enough. If I want to be tucked down and go fast, I can tuck down and go fast. My knee and the foot position, though different than the KTM 390 Duke, not uncomfortable, okay? The only thing that I actually have something to work on is uh, with the wrist, with the throttle control, because I'm so used to holding on to the edge of the handle uh, to manipulate and control my throttle on the KTM, I found myself doing that on the Kawasaki too. Now that might change in time, but so far my hand placement is still the same. The way that I turn and lean the bike is still the same. So my riding style hasn't changed just because I changed the bike. My body position might have, the way that I lean into turns might have, and how fast I choose to accelerate has definitely. So the get up and go with this KTM, very, very slow. Talking zero to 18, maybe 20 miles an hour in first gear before you have to shift. You're not exactly gonna get in front or around traffic with a bike like this. With the 636, it goes zero to 60 right now in first gear if you really wanted to. The RPM range where it kicks in really, 6,000 RPM. Maxes out, I think, at like 18,000 RPM. The, K9, uh, the KTM 390 Duke, I think, tops out at 12,000 RPM, and it really doesn't even pick up till about eight grand, and then it kind of dippers off at around nine to 10 grand. So really not a lot of extra punch. You just get a little extra, little tiny boost towards the end of its RPM range before you got to shift into the next gear. I think gas mileage wise, they're both approximately the same as far as what I was told about the 636. If you're easy on the throttle and you're at a lower RPM, you're gonna get about 50 miles to the gallon, as per Josh. The one that I have here on the KTM 390 Duke, I wanna say is probably between 56 and 60 miles to the gallon, so about the same, and it's less horsepower, less CC bike. Single cylinder, I believe this is a V-twin. I'm telling you, I'm extremely ecstatic about this bike. I can't wait to go ahead and ride it again. I am going to take it out next weekend, see what kind of trouble we can get into and what kind of adventures we have. That's all I got for this video, guys. Thanks as always for watching. If you like it, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down. I apologize for the wind noise, okay? I don't have an internal built-in microphone to avoid that. Uh, the GoPro that I have, this Hero 5 Black, the adapter doesn't tie in well to the microphones that I've purchased in the past, so unless I buy a GoPro mic, which I'm still looking for, one that's compatible with it, uh, we're just gonna have to deal with it for the meantime. That's all I got. Again, check out Josh's channel, link down below in the description. We'll see you guys next time. Cheers and deuces.